Hello, Michael here with another Redshift tutorial. This week we're going to be talking about shadow catches. Uh, so shadow catches, if you don't know, sort of um, are also known as holdouts. Basically, they're a, um, poly a polygon or a polygon surface uh, that is not visible to the camera but will reflect um, light if you set it to and also catch shadows if you set it to. Uh, so to create one of these, the first thing we do is we're, for this particular example, going to create a um, plane. And I'm just going to size it up a bit. Um, you don't necessarily have to have subdivisions, but like, because you can actually um, apply this shader to any geometry. But um, I like to have the subdivisions in there so it makes it easier to keep it in perspective. And you'll understand that a bit better um, once we get rolling with some um, images. I'm also going to import a model real quick. Okay, so we've got a model in our scene um, who has already been textured with uh, Redshift uh, materials. Uh, so now we need to create our holdout material for our plane. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is, uh, for the first example, we're going to create an image plane. Now with Redshift, the image plane doesn't actually render. Um, you have to do this a slightly different way, but for reference, it's useful to use the image plane. Um, now I'm going to go to my perspective camera, go to view, I uh, go to image plane and import image and then I'm just going to grab my photo that I took while I was in the city some time ago and you can see that that is in the scene um, and it's projected to the camera which means that no matter which way the camera is facing it's always going to be the back. It's also known as a back plate. Um, so now we need to make sure that the aspect ratio of a render is the same as our image. So um, basically what I did with this particular one uh, was this image is like 5,500 by 3,500. I don't want to render that large. So I just divided each uh, dimension by four, which gave me 1296 by 864. Um, so that will maintain the same aspect ratio, but it doesn't have to be rendered up to the same um, resolution. So now if we turn on the uh, render, uh, the uh, resolution gate, you'll see that that fits in nicely. So our objective is going to be to place our model within the scene and make it look believable. Um, so if I render this now, just as a preview, I'll show you what it looks like before I get any lights in there or anything. So as you can see, um, the render doesn't recognize the image plate created in Maya. Um, so we have to do something slightly different to make that work. So what we're going to do, um, first off, is we're going to create a dome light. So we're going to go to Redshift, we're going to go to Lights, and we're going to go to Dome Light. And then we're going to go into the attribute editor for our dome light. Then we're going to scroll down uh, to backplate and we're going to enable the backplate. And then we're going to open the map. Uh, we're going to go to the same image that we use for our, our um, Maya backplate and then assign that. Uh, and this is an sRGB image as well. So make sure you have that enabled. Um, if you don't already have um, rules set up for file types um, for linear workflow. Uh, so because our light is off, however, um, this won't render correctly because it will see that there's a light in the scene, but it'll see that it's off, so it won't actually apply any lights. So um, we're going to um, turn it on just momentarily um, and render it. So you'll see that our uh, backplate has uh, rendered um, and you can see our monster in the scene, but you can also see this plane. We obviously don't want the plane, so let's fix that by creating a... Um, shadow catcher. So we're going to select the plane. We're going to open up the Hypershade editor. Uh, we're going to type in shadow and that's going to give us redshift matte shadow catcher. I'm going to select that to create it and we're going to select our plane and then we're going to select that material, right click and hold and assign to material, uh, material to geometry. So now we need to adjust a couple of settings. Uh, for the shadow catcher. We need to make sure that background as environment is selected so it um, will basically appear invisible. Um, we want to make sure that it catches diffuse um, and sh catches shadows because it's going to be its primary function. Reflection, if you've got a, reflected su a reflective surface like a glossy uh, wood or a mirror or anything like that, um, you'll want to make sure that you've got catch reflections on. But because our monster is going to be sitting on the road basically, we don't need to worry about that. Um, so let's give that an IPR and see what it works out like. All right, so he's basically sitting in the scene. The perspective isn't quite right, and we can do a couple of things to help that. So a easy rule of thumb to get your 
um, plane in perspective when you're using a back plate is to try and line your plate up, uh, try and line your plane up with the horizon of your image. So it's a straight line across uh, the horizon. So the horizon of our image is roughly here and you can tell by the vanishing point of these lines, they're disappearing at about there. Um, so that's the road is disappearing there. So our vanishing point's about there. Um, so we want to make it so when we rotate the camera, uh, so it's per, uh, perpendicular to the side of the plane, the uh, plane is in fact just a straight line across the horizon. So basically you want to sort of move it up to the horizon and just rotate the camera up and down until you sort of get it to be like that. That's pretty much perfect. So now we don't want to rotate the camera anymore. Um, we can rotate it around the object if you want it to, uh, if you wanted to actually rotate the object, the best thing to do would actually be rotate the object. So now we're just going to be holding Alt um, and middle mouse clicking and dragging and that's going to keep our monster in perspective and I'll show you that with the IPR. So now he looks a lot more believable straight away. Um, so there's a couple of things that we need to work on though to get this to look a little bit more believable. Um, you'll see that he's sitting in shadow but um, he's not actually receiving any direct light. He's receiving the environment light which is set to a grey colour I believe set to white. Uh, so we'd probably want to tint it either sky blue or we'd want to actually turn it off and add in some physical lights uh, around him to sort of illuminate him to get him to look believable because that is what is going to ultimately make your uh, your images look believable is the lighting. Okay, so uh, now that you know the basics, I just went ahead and uh, did a little bit more work on this one. So um, a couple of things that I've changed and I'll show you in the Hypershade editor. So with the matte shadow catcher, um, I actually went to ambient occlusion and enabled it. So um, which creates a, a better um, detail in your shadows and a slightly higher contrast. So that can be useful for some of these close to the ground areas just to grab a little bit more contrast um, to your other areas, especially if it's already in shadow. Um, and I also created a very simple blocker with just some uh, with a, a, a Photoshop brush. Um, and I've just got a smaller light there that's going to that's casting a shadow through that. And um, I've also created an area light here on the left hand side. Uh, that is the same color as the sky, which I just literally picked from the sky. Um, and you get a pretty good result. So the really the key is trying to simulate the lighting that is already in the environment that, you've, that you're using as your backplate. So always keep your lighting theory in mind. Uh, your light sources, any possible bounce light sources. Um, your matte shadow catcher is a material. Uh, so make sure that you set its color to the same as the uh, ground that you're working with. So you can just use color pick again um, and then you can define its weight. Uh, make sure it's catching shadows um, and then you can you can select, you know, sort of the shadow col color as well. Um, generally, you're going to be working with black unless you're using uh, doing something artistic. Um, and then, like I said before, reflections if it's a reflective surface. Um, and then ambient occlusion if you are uh, if you want a little bit of extra detail there. So that's basically it for uh, for doing planes. Um, if you want to know a bit more about blockers, I can do a little quick tutorial on how I did that in a separate video. Uh, now I'll show you how to do a dome light with a shadow catcher. All right, so um, you can see that I've just got our once the sitting. Uh, alone in a white room with our dome light just set to white. So let's apply an HDRI image to that or in this particular image uh, example I'm just going to be using a JP because that's what I've got but that's fine. It's a 360 degree image though that's, that's the important part. And run a quick render. Alright so straight away you can see that it pretty much works. Um, so the key things are for it to work is that you want to go into your Hypershade editor um, and with your shadow catcher uh, make sure that background is environment is enabled um, and then catch diffuse and then set your color uh, to whatever your color of your ground is. So with this particular example, um, it's no good uh, that this, the color of the ground is gray because he's sitting in the ocean and also in the ocean you'd be receiving a little bit of reflection. So uh, let's zoom in a touch, I'll just sort of get him roughly there. Um, and I'll just quickly um, show you how you might create this to make it look a little bit more like water. Uh, and I can place this anywhere in the scene and it's 
not going to look too bad so long as the horizon of the HDRI is in the center of its overall image it's not going to be too hard to line up your um, uh, your object with the perspective of the camera you might need to fiddle around a little bit um, the technique that I did with the 2d image doesn't quite work but um, it, it will be easy enough I assure you um, we can also raise this um, shadow catcher so it looks like he's sitting slightly in the water and then let's go to the um, attributes of our shadow catcher um, the color we will quickly do a color selection of the ground um, catch shadows reflections we want to catch reflections because the water is going all the way up to here you can see the edge of the shadow catcher so you probably just want to make that a bit larger um, and I'm going to use GGX and then you can adjust the weight so it's not actually that it's not actually that much reflection because of the overcast sky and because of the roughness um, I could actually increase the poly uh, count of this and then apply something like the hot ocean deformer to it to get it to look a lot rougher like water and you get a little bit more realistic result uh, but for now this is just going to have to do uh, for this tutorial um, and I'm also going to check on ambient um, occlusion I just think it makes it look a little bit better overall um, and then once again um, we want to think about how to light this guy to make him look a little bit more realist realistic uh, this shot it looks like it's been shot at about midday based on the um, where the shadows are in the environment they look pretty much over here I think the sun's just up here coming down so we could chuck a um, a light overhead just by going to redshift lights physical light and you can do this a couple of different ways you could make this simulate the sun or, you, or sun or you can make it simulate the sky I'm going to go with sort of like sky with a uh, grayish color uh, we we'll use a disk um, and then render that and then we just need to back the light off to the point where it looks fairly realistic and it does look like our lights also slightly to the left so we'll have a slight cast happening um, and then we'll obviously make our light not visible and you get something like look that looks like that um, and obviously this is just a very very quick example um, of one way of doing it so I'm not gonna spend too much time getting the lighting correct so obviously this doesn't look super realistic but um, you get the idea you get there's quite a lot of things you can do um, with the shadow catcher with redshift um, it re works really well and it's easy as to work with so um, if you hadn't haven't had a play with it yet I recommend getting in there just grab any old image that you have on your phone chuck it in there and try and um, match up some shadows to it make sure you're aware of the environment you can create more than one shadow catcher and you can also use them to uh, reflect uh, global illumination bounces as well so consider them as a, a reflection for light uh, at for bounce light not just uh, to receive direct illumination and shadow from your objects uh, but that's pretty much it for this very brief tutorial if you've got any questions if you'd like me to clarify anything leave a comment um, if you liked the video make sure you click the like button so other people can find it um, and if you haven't already make sure you subscribe because I'll be doing a lot more tutorials in the future I'm doing two a week at the moment so um, if you want to make sure you catch those make sure you're subscribed that's it for now though thank you very much for watching and happy rendering